Welcome to ECE 461 661 Control Systems for Fall 2022. I'm Jake Lauer, and this video is kind of kind of go through the course, the syllabus, the grading policy, homework, stuff like that. Now, this course has no textbook. The textbook is on Bison Academy. If you go to bisonacademy.com, this is the semi-official website for the ECE department. Click on 461. That takes you to this page, the syllabus. Now, the purpose of 461 is basically applied math. Control systems actually has a couple different meanings. One of them would be state transition logic, kind of what you did back in 275. There's a thing called programmable logic controllers, or PLCs. Think about a car wash. When you go into a car wash, you stop. I turn on a pump for so many seconds, turn it off, turn on a motor for so many seconds, turn it off. Kind of a sequential, sequential machine. That's ladder logic. We'll be doing that for the first two weeks. And what the PLCs look like, I'm going to show you one that, the one we're using is from Alan Bradley. Ellen Bradley is the standard used in the United States. In Europe, they use uh, Siemens. But anyway, this is the Ellen Bradley PLC. It's on a little board, so you can have the little push buttons to simulate binary inputs, like a car comes into the car wash, you hit a button. It's got two analog inputs, so as temperature goes up and down, water level goes up and down. Then four binary outputs. Those are just relays. Relay open, relay closed. You can tie that to a motor, so the motor turns on. Tie that to a siren, so the siren turns on. These are tied to four LEDs. In addition, the fourth one charges up a capacitor. And here's a little bar chart showing the voltage is going from 0 to 10 volts, kind of simulating the water level in a tank filling up and, and uh, leaking out. With that, we'll be doing some uh, programming. So that's kind of the first two weeks. It's programming, same thing you did before, but with a graphical language called ladder logic. Starting on week three, we'll then switch over to a second definition of control systems called uh, applied math. There we'll look at Laplace transforms, kind of review of signals and systems. The prereq for this course is ECE 343, signals and systems. Uh, this course is actually easier than signals. In signals, you look at two-sided, two-dimensional Laplace transforms for image processing. In this class, we're looking at time responses. And time is a mundane, uh, unidirectional, one-dimensional vector. So we are looking at the single-dimensional, uni unidirectional, single-sided Laplace transforms. Uh, but anyway, kind of re review of Laplace transforms. Then we'll look at different ways of coming up with the differential equation for different systems. Um, heat equations, electrical circuits, mass spring systems, rotational systems, mirror systems, DC motors, things like that. So when we talk about a transfer function, like you did in signals, input, output, and a transfer function, where does that transfer function come from? Then we'll have our first test. Starting October 3rd, we'll actually start getting into control systems. Once I've got a system with an input, output, and a transfer function, how do I close the feedback loop? That's what this course is all about, and it's kind of like the cruise control on your car. I could have open loop control. You sit there and push on the gas pedal to maintain speed, or hit the cruise control. There I just tell it, go 65 miles an hour, and there's an automatic controller adjusting the accelerometer, or the gas pedal, trying to maintain speed. How do you do that? That's kind of what the second half of the course is all about. Now, root look is the first approach we're going to look at. As you close the feedback loop, the dynamics change. And that's kind of like when you ride your bicycle. Bicycles are unstable. If you take a bicycle, let it go, it falls over. First time you learn how to ride a bike, first time you got on it, you fell off, skinned your knees, very sad, tears happen, all sorts of things like that. Eventually, you learn how to ride a bike. And what you're doing is you're learning the feedback control law. How do I adjust my weight? How do I adjust the steering to keep the bike upright? The closed loop system is you riding the bicycle. The open loop system is just the bicycle. You can have unstable open loop systems, but you care about is the closed loop response. 
With feedback, I can take systems that are unstable and make them stable, which is a big deal because a lot of things are unstable. Uh, Walking is unstable, riding a bike is unstable, some aircraft are unstable, the economy is unstable. With feedback, I can stabilize those. There's different ways of coming up with the feedback control law. How do you adjust the input based upon the output? I can just have a gain. I can have some dynamics in the compensator. So we'll look at various types of di dynamics. What happens when there's a delay? Uh, delays are the bane of control systems. If Think about steering a car. If you turn the steering wheel and the car doesn't respond for one second, you have a real hard time keeping the car on the road. Uh, how do you design systems with delays? And how do you do unstable systems? Then we'll have our second test. Starting October 31st, we'll switch over to digital control. Anything I can do in the analog world, I can do in software. In software, you really should be using the Z transforms. Um, how do you design feedback controllers in software, meaning Z transforms? Then finally, we'll look at a different approach from the frequency domain standpoint. If I have a dynamic system, apply a sine wave at the input, I get a sine wave at the output. It's got a gain and a phase shift. Can I design a pre-filter to warp the frequency response of a bad system to make it look like a good system with feedback? How do you do that? And we'll do that using various techniques called Nichols charts, gain compensation, gain lead, lag, body plots. Then the semester ends. So that's kind of where we're heading. In terms of the syllabus, time passes. There we go. Uh, I'm Jake Lauer, of course. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. on Zoom. I'm also an ECU 201 if you need help. I'm usually around most of the time, so just shoot me an email, tell me that you need some help, and I can hop on Zoom and help you out. Lectures are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. in ECE 123. The lab, uh, kind of two types of labs. The first two weeks, the lab are PLCs. And those you can check out in room 211 or check out for me, use them uh, to do the labs. The rest of the labs are using MATLAB and a program called Physim, kind of a graphical way to simulate dynamic systems. Those who don't really need a physical lab, you just need software, a laptop. The lab times are open labs. Basically, do the lab whenever you want. Bulletin description for this class. It's the analysis and design of control systems, controller designs to meet time and frequency specifications, three lectures, and one lab. Well, it's a kind of an open lab using MATLAB. The course objective is by the end of the semester, Students should be able to determine the differential equations that describe electrical circuits, mass spring systems, and rotational systems, determine the transfer function of a system from its differential equation, determine how, to, how a given system will behave by inspection based upon the dominant poles, determine how a feedback control system will behave as the feedback gains change using root locus techniques, and design a single loop feedback system for dynamic systems using root locus and frequency domain techniques. Now the grading in this course, there's going to be three midterms, homework and labs. Well, the labs are part of the homework. Uh, a final. So of these, final counts two units, puts the overall average. Final, be, final would be based upon the average of these where if you have 90% or more, guaranteed you have an A. Between 80 and 90, guaranteed a B. I do curve down, but not curve up. Meaning if everybody gets a 90, I'm happy to give out all A's. If you have an 89, kind of depends upon the curve. Sometimes my tests are a little bit more aggressive than I intended. So I think last year, I think the cutoff for an A was 80, 89. Depends upon the year. If you have a 90%, guaranteed you got an A though. And part of the reason is that if you work together, help each other learn the material. I don't want to penalize you. So I'm happy to give out all A's if you can demonstrate knowledge of this material. If you miss an exam, um, let me know in advance of the exam. I'll try to figure out a way to accommodate you. My preference is I don't, I prefer not making up two exams. 
late homework won't be accepted since homework is posted. And typically, homework is due on Monday. Uh, we'll go over it on Wednesday. As long as you turn in the homework before the solutions are posted, I'm okay with that. But once the solutions are posted, I won't take the homework because it kind of takes the challenge out of doing the homework once the solutions are posted. In terms of the HyFlex model for this year, you can take the course any way you want. You can take it in person. All lectures will be live streamed. There's also all the lecture notes are posted online. You're welcome to switch between any of those methods that you like on a daily basis. My goal for online is to make online just as good as in person. Um, but I've been teaching for 30, 30 years in person, three years online. So in person is better than online. But again, it depends upon you. If you want to take it online, that's fine. If you want to switch on a daily basis, that's fine. As long as you get the material. In terms of the PLC labs, we'll, I've got 10 Allen Bradley Micro 10 PLCs you can check out. Those you can pretty much do anytime during the semester. The second half doesn't depend upon the first half. Um, my preference would be get the labs out of the way so you don't have to worry about them towards the end. You can also use PLC Fiddle or um, Allen Bradley. Uh, last year, people used PLC Fiddle and it wasn't that friendly to use. The Allen Bradleys are kind of nice. Plus, you have the actual PLC. It's kind of fun to see the binary inputs and outputs working. And there's quite a few jobs out there on PLC programming. You already know how to program PLCs. It's what you did in 275. Just the syntax is slightly different. It uses a programming language called Ladder Logic and, or another language called Pascal, which is very similar to C. Once you've used it, you'll get the hang of it. So again, I'd recommend using the Allen Bradley PLCs. When we get to feedback control, um, to prove it, you can either use VisSim, Simulink, or a circuit lab. A circuit lab can do block diagrams, dynamic systems. VisSim is what I recommend. It's got a really nice graphical language, very similar to Simulink. Uh, Simulink is part of MATLAB. This is just a way to verify your paper designs. Can I sit there and draw out the dynamic system and simulate it and see does the simulation match what I calculated? In terms of resources that you need, you're going to need a calculator that does complex numbers, especially on the tests. My recommendation is the HP 35S. That's a $37 calculator pre-pandemic. Uh, apparently, there are supply chain issues because they just shot up to about $184. You can occasionally find them for $20 bucks on eBay. Uh, that's going to hit or miss. There's also a free app. Free42 is the HP42 calculator. I'm on your cell phone. I like free. A lot of students use the TI-84+. Plus, or if you take the exams online, you have access to MATLAB. MATLAB does complex numbers really well as well. But you're going to need something that does complex numbers. And finally, for legal stuff, uh, attendance is mandatory, but how you attend is up to you. You could attend in person, uh, online for Zoom, or watch YouTube videos. Your pick. If you have any special needs, let me know. We'll accommodate you some way. For academic honesty, Students that graduate from NDSU are designing things like flight controllers, fuel controllers, um, you know, defibrillators, pacemakers, stuff like that. Stuff you learn in this class is going to be used when you get to industry. It's a whole lot easier if you learn the material in class so that you can apply it when you get to industry. Much harder if you kind of figure out a way to get through the class, get an A without learning anything, get to industry and find out that I don't know how to do my work. You know, that can be kind of an issue. If you can figure out how to get through the course without learning anything, don't. You know, the whole point behind the class is here's useful information you're going to use when you get to industry. And let's see. Honor code. Yeah, 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 yeah. Veterans. Again, if you have any problems, let me know. I'll figure out how to accommodate you. So that's kind of an overview of the class. One last thing to mention. Under Homework Sets and Solutions, the course has been running quite a while. Homeworks and solutions from previous semesters are posted up here. 
along with, like last year, I've got YouTube videos. So that I've got the homework set, like homework set number five. Kind of slow. Here's the homework set, uh, mass spring systems. Analyze that puppy. The solutions, if you get stuck on the homework, here's the solution to a similar problem, but different. I post different problems every semester, so if you copy and paste, it'll be wrong. It's a different problem. Kind of showing, I'm going to go from a mass spring system. Here's the circuit equivalent. Here are the equations. Put in matrix form. MATLAB code. Fairly detailed solutions, so you kind of see how you solve this type of problem. In addition, for the people that took the class online, this is where I go over the homework. So if you get stuck, this is a good place to go to get some help on the homework. I also have office hours. Under resources, here is a see different types of calculators, how to use the HP35S, how to download MATLAB. It's free to use for all, all NDSU students. And for textbook, again, the lecture notes are all online. If you want a hard copy of a textbook, here's some good textbooks. The version doesn't matter. Get a version that's like five or six years old. Applied math has been the same for the last hundred years. It doesn't matter if your textbook's 10 years old. The homework problems will be different, but I'm not using the problems from these textbooks. Find a textbook that's cheap, and that'll be good. The one I kind of like is Friedland. This is one where the publisher actually discontinued it, gave the rights back to Friedland. So all profits go to Friedland directly. A $20 textbook, this is a really good textbook. It's cheap because the publishers no longer own the copyright. All the profits go straight to the author which is kind of nice. Uh, let's see. Here's a, another good one. Again, the version doesn't matter. Uh, $179 is a little bit pricey. Get an older edition. Again, anything with linear system and design, anything with root locus will work. So let's see, there's the $200 version. Here we go. Uh, a $24 used version. It's an older, older edition. It doesn't matter. So you can spend $200 for the new version, $24 for used version. So that kind of in a nutshell is 461 control systems. Of course, I kind of enjoy. It's what I majored in in college, why I really enjoy it. With that, we'll then uh, switch over to ladder logic. So, hope you enjoy the course. And again, you can t attend any way you like in person, live stream on Zoom. I'll send the Zoom link on Blackboard shortly, or watch the YouTube videos.